And a warm welcome back to you, uh, still with John Gilburn, Managing Director of Sheffield's Ollerton Stadium, with Mark Smith, the former Sheffield Wednesday and Barnsley player, who's now interim manager of Chesterfield Football Club. They used to say caretaker manager. It's a bit posher now. They call them interim it managers. Oh, yes, right. it's okay, interim right. manager. It's still, still only for, for as long yeah, just, or a short yeah, or whatever exactly. if you want the job. James Gregg uh, joins us for his roundup. Before yeah, that, absolutely. I don't know if you were watching from outside the first half. Yeah. We left the mid-story here. He's playing for Sheffield Wednesday at Manchester City at Main Road mm -hmm. in those days in a League Cup tie. Brian Hornsby's taken a penalty for Wednesday near the end and he's missed, correct? Yeah. And then... Then the referee ordered a retake because they keep a move for a reason. He was Joe Corrigan. Big Joe Corrigan. Yeah. Big Joe Corrigan. And then the next minute, the ball ends up in my hands. I don't know how. As I said before, I do not know why it ended up in my hands and I put it down actually scored. Grief. So... This was as a kid of 18 or 19. Yeah, yeah, First yeah. penalty you ever took, yeah? Yeah, that was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that from and again, I, I can't... I can't... I can't understand, I can't believe, and I, I, can't, I can't remember why. I was the next in line, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, you just put that one away. And then from that one, yeah, I, took, I sent it wrong way, as you do. Five anyway. minutes to go, by the way. <laughs> Five minutes to go. Put some one up. What's the result? Yeah, we lost 2-1. Oh, no. no. I think I might have to put one that? in your neck. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> We've had some late goals in local football, which we'll be talking about anyway in a minute. You've got, you've got while James is talking, James Gregory's round up, you've got a few minutes <clears> to <throat> wriggle around questions I'm going to ask you about Chesterfield and your future there. OK? <laughs> Right. Be warned. <laughs> OK, right. James, what else is going on? Not just football, as we all know. No, say. it's not. We'll start with football. Um, we've already touched on that. There's been some late goals this week, none less that they killed the Blades last weekend at Oakwell. But we'll start with Sheffield Wednesday. They got dumped out of the League Cup on Tuesday night to Stoke City. Uh, but there's a bigger game, though, many um, Owls fans' eyes at Hillsborough this weekend. It's a televised game against High Flyers Derby. Um, so, of course, the Owls just one point outside the playoffs. That could be a really, really big game yeah. um, in terms of how the season finishes. Um, and you look back at these sorts of games, yeah. don't you, at the end of the season, you think, oh, wow, yeah. well, if we could have only got a point against them or whatever. And this is exactly one of those games as well. Derby sitting pretty in third, Wednesday obviously in eighth, as I've already said, have one point to, off the playoffs. have to hope for, you know, Wednesday are not in the best shape physically at the moment with the injuries, Leuven's Lees in particular, uh, Bannon, will he come back? That, those kind of questions could have a big bearing on, on what happens on Sunday. Absolutely. Against yeah. a really good informed team. So Absolutely. a major test. But I see it as being a really good game, actually. Yeah, yeah I think so, it will be a good game. You know, two you know, informed squads, really, in the league, aren't they? And they've yeah. been on a good run both sides. Derby, obviously, have been knocking on the door for the last two or three seasons now. Yeah. So it's a pivotal game, I think, in the Sheffield Wednesday we'll be season. Able, we'll be able to look back on it, maybe in some depth next week. I can assure you, uh, just heard the news today, there is a, we have a major Sheffield Wednesday guest on the programme next week. Very okay. good. We look forward you know, to that one. You know who it is, do you? I, I do yeah. know who that is, but we'll oh, keep that one right. quiet. Sheffield United, a tough one to take, as already said at Oakwell last week. In the dying embers of the game, they're in the FA Cup this weekend against Oldham Athletic. Hopefully, right a few wrongs as well. Um, I know that the mood is improving in the Blades camp. It was great to see John Brayford back on Saturday after yeah. visiting this studio on Thursday. Great yeah. performance. It must have been the tea that I made him before the yeah. show. Last I think week. it was the tea drank after the show that did it. <coughs> yeah, definitely. We all went for a cup of tea after. We the did. Show. We That's did go for a cup of tea, indeed. Yeah, yeah of course we did. <laughs> Move on to local football now. Hallam FC, goal in the last minute of their League Cup tie in extra time. Saw them, um, that's obviously, unfortunately, knocked out of the League Cup. Uh, but they take on lowly Wurzborough at Sandygate on Saturday, while Sheffield FC hosts Daventry in the league. I followed that on Twitter, that Hallam game last night. Apparently it was an incredible game, bizarre yeah. game it was described as. It was. There must have been any number of near misses. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And, well, Hallam took the lead and then um, Selby equalised and then it went to extra time and it was in the 119th minute that they got the winner. Oh, so yeah. it must have been very t difficult for them to take, uh, but they can bounce game. back. It was a great game, apparently. Really great game. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, well, that, you know, they're just outside the playoffs now in that league. First time this season. Um, they've got, uh, as I already mentioned, Wurzburg. Good chance to get some points on the board 
Jordan back to winning ways for them, for Ryan Hindley's men. Uh, Steelers, they take on Coventry on Saturday and then they welcome Fife to the arena on Sunday at 5pm face-off. Uh, the Steelers are third in the table as well with a game in hand on the top of the table, Nottingham Panthers. So um, it's very, very tight in that league as well. There's been a revival. It was the most extraordinary interview with Paul Thompson. I don't know if you, you heard yes, it. Yes, I'm aware Following of it, yeah. a, an away defeat just uh, about two or three weeks ago, it certainly put football rants in the shade. A bunch of homers, he said we are, a bunch of homers. And that was one of the mildest things he said. He's had a response. <laughs> yes, I yeah. can imagine. Yeah, yeah well, that, that's, um, yeah, definitely. YouTube, <clears throat> some old Neil Warnock stuff, and it doesn't compare to that, I tell you that. <laughs> um, got um, Rugby Union now, of course, we've got two teams in the local area in National 3 North. Very good standard of rugby, and the Tigers, they're top of that league by 10 points. They travel to Hull this weekend, see if they can extend that lead. Hull, our fellow promotion chases well Sheffield Rugby Club they host Rossendale and they look to make it five wins on the spin for them so very good stuff for the rugby union sides in the local area at the moment as well finished with individuals Nick Matthew he waltzed into the second round of the Hong Kong Open late last night and Matthew Fitzpatrick Danny Willett both in action at the Nedbank Golf Challenge uh, Matt Fitz started with a minus three round of 69 uh, whilst Danny Willett he's won back from Henrik Stenson on five under par Mm, brilliant stuff. stuff. Thanks very much, no James. At all. You know, every time I think about uh, make a mental, I must invite Nick Matthew back to the studio. You come in here and tell me he's in Hong Kong yeah. or somewhere like that. So we'll put <laughs> him on the, the back burner for a while. Uh, James, thanks very much indeed. Um, OK, John Gilburn, uh, boss of, uh, for want of a better word, boss of Sheffield's Olerton Stadium. Yeah. And Mark Smith, boss, uh, current boss anyway, of uh, Chesterfield Football Club. You were asked it today. I'm going to have to pitch the same question at you. Do you want this job full-time? And I'll answer it in the same, uh, same way, <laughs> Alan. Um, <laughs> all I'm concentrating on is, is obviously doing what I need to do, trying to get some results. Um, the the, the res results I'm trying to get are not, you know, obviously it's important that we win games. But me as a professional, I like to win games. So I'm actually not thinking, well, if I win two or three games, that gives me a better chance of the job. All I'm concentrating is, is can we get some wins? Because... A, I would like to get some wins. I'd, I'd like to be part of yeah. a football team that's actually winning games. Um, as I've said before, I, I think whatever will be, will be. I mean, if we get to a situation where we win a few games, then obviously our speculation mm. could be that they might offer me the job. As far as I'm aware, they're open-minded about it, which includes the possibility of you turning things round and you landing the job, mm. albeit for maybe until the end of the season or whatever. But certainly you're part of the equation in the thinking. Are you aware of that? Yeah, because um, when I spoke to Chris and, and, and Dave on, on Saturday, they, they said they're in no rush. Mm. Uh, it's not as though they'd already got two or three players, or sorry, two or three names in the hat. Um, and they were really saying to me that it just boils, if you win a few games, you know, it, it could be you. Simple mm. as. Um, which obviously I, I look at, I mean, it's, it's a precarious profession to be in. I do think that you've got to be um, a certain kind of, of person to be a manager, somebody who can, can cope with pressure, um, somebody who can actually man-manage, somebody who can organise and stuff like that. I sometimes think that I can't do that because I'll, I'll, I'll look at which, things which, I do. Which and part of time. it can't you do? Well, it's like it's, it's the pressure bit, as I say. I, I mean, I've, 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 I was assistant manager back in the day with Sam Allardyce back mm. in '97. At Notts County, um, and we had both sides of the coin. We had a relegation, where it's horrible. You were constantly looking over your shoulder. You were constantly going after games and making excuses why you got beat again. Um, and then you get to the end of the season where you think ah, the phone's going to go any minute. Like now, mm. uh, look as luck would have it, it never went like that. We actually then had the following season where we we romped the the, the title. Yeah. Um, in '97 and won it in March, so you get both sides then, Alan. And I, mm. and, and you know, I, I look at things sometimes and probably look at it too much. Mm. I think about things too much. Um, some a lot of people yeah. are saying just get on with it. 
if you get the chance, take it. Take it. It's an insecure profession anyway. Even as a coach, you've had spells. Yeah. I mean, goodness me, you've had spells at the Barnsley Academy for five years. Mm. Uh, you played at Barnsley, of course. Sheffield United, uh, four years. Mm. Uh, you were mm. involved in, 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 in Bramall Lane and well, mm. Shirecliff. Mm. Uh, Chesterfield youth coach from 2013. Mm. So none of these positions is entirely secure. No, that, that's, that's where football's changed. I mean, mm. back in the day, I think you know, obviously, if the if the manager left, he, he left, and all his, his his staff would leave with him. But generally, that wouldn't the, the ripples wouldn't reach as far down as the youth. No. Um, but even that's changed, like now, where I think yeah. sometimes people come in and 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 the managers want to change everything at the football club. Yeah. I don't agree with it because mm. because I don't think it helps with consistency of of, of what you're trying to do. No. The, the, the kids should be left on their own and, and, and you've got your own job there just to try and bring through the next crop of players and, and constantly evolving and trying to bring through yeah. players and then it's up to the manager at the time to take it on. But again, you know, you're quite right what you say. It does affect the uh, the, the youth setup sometimes. It, it can do, but there's you thinking perhaps at the moment I'm more secure as uh, Chesterfield's uh, academy manager mm -hmm. than I am as uh, first team manager. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, Long -term, longer term. I mean, it would be great if you if we say, yeah, I'll have a go at it, and they give, they give the job, and then it doesn't yeah. work out, and then they say, well, right, you can go back now to do the academy. But that would doesn't happen. work like that, no, because no. that that door will have shut. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's the a... kind of things that you got to work out if it gets down that road. I mean, as I say, we'll get a few. If hopefully we'll get a few results, and then from there, I'd say, who well, knows? We'll Reassess. Yeah. We'll yeah. Yeah. So you can't rule it out yeah. then. No. Um, you, you, Mark Crossley, former Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper, among yeah, others, Nottingham yeah. Forest, is assisting you. And also Paul Mitchell, who's a guy that a lot of you won't know, but actually is revered within football circles as a talent spotter, particularly of players from the lower leagues. Yeah, He's assisting yeah. you as well. Yeah, I mean, so. they've, they've been a really big help because obviously they've been closer to the first team than, than I have. Yeah. Um, so they, they've been really good as regards letting me know little bits and pieces yeah. what, what's been going off and what might be needed to... To be changed and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. uh, as I say, Mitch, Mitch is going to come with us like now, so he's going to have to put his his scouting duties a little bit on the back burner until we've until you know something happens, mm -hmm. um, and then Norm, Mark, who we uh, big Norms, big as they Norm, call like, it. Yeah. Where's that it, come from? Um, it's it's actually come from remember the Cheers, the, the program yeah. Cheers. Yeah. The big guy sort of in the right. bar, Norm. I see. Yeah. And every time he used to walk in, he used to shout, Norm! Yeah, right. That was him. Okay. <laughs> That's wonder. where it comes from. For <laughs> okay. some reason, they must think he looks like him. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you are. There yes. We find out something every day. <laughs> Good. Okay. Good nickname, I like that one. Yeah. yeah, well, his Twitter handle is at, at Big Norms, isn't it? It's a big handle to have at Big Norms. <laughs> yeah, of course, you're not on Twitter, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Neither you. Uh, we're going to come back to Mark later, but. Uh, I've got to bring you in on this before anything else, uh, John Gilburn from Ollerton Stadium. According to my research, provided me by Richard Fiddler, uh, who uh, leaves no stone unturned here, uh, you were a top ice dancer at one time, earlier in life. You were third in the British Championships, no less. Yep. And yep. this bit has got to be a joke. It says, you have beaten Torville MD. No, it's not a joke, it's a claim to fame. I was, uh, I, I have to admit that, you know, I was probably at, at about at the top of my sort of skating career um, and they were only just coming through the ranks. So, um, you know, I was skating against them and yes, I did beat them. Where was this? So It was actually in Nottingham at the home rink. So it was even That's better. Incredible, That's it? an away yeah, win, isn't it? It's it is an away win. It's good. That's the yeah. title. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got any proof of this? <laughs> <laughs> Not on me, no. But, uh, but yeah, there's, 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 there's you, proof in the record. Have you got record. YouTube or anything like that? <laughs> no, afraid <laughs> not. Good grief. No. I wonder if they I'm talk not... about it and say, do you know, believe it or not, when we started out, <laughs> I think this have... guy called John Gilbert. <laughs> I think they'll have long forgotten about me with the success that they've had. Just like you've forgotten how I trained with Sheffield Wednesday and played in a game of two touch with you. You forgot. So I think, memorable. I think the bruises, the, 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 you know, because I think he kicked me. Did I? I think, I think right, that's, well, that's coming back to it, me now. It, I probably did. I was trying to kick the ball and yeah, missed. Yeah, missed it, and then you, I got yeah, in the way like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. That was back in the Howard Wilkinson days, that was. Yeah. That was another influence on, on your career, yeah? Different from Jack. Yeah, <laughs> very different. Um, Jack was very, like, matter of fact about football at times. I thought if he'd have got a little bit more, he got that much going off. Mm. He was he was into the fishing, the grouse season, all that kind of shooting and all this kind of thing. I think at the time he'd got a 
a television program going somewhere. So, so he was always yeah. missing. Um, whereas I would used to come in and <laughs> and it was like from from day one, it was like everything regimented, put in place. A lot of it I still use and, and were, 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 were like. Um, his philosophies and stuff like that is, is stuck with me like now. So, you know, in that respect, it was good. But Howard was, he was just a, a, a strict disciplinarian, wanted everything done. And we used to run like you've never known for three mm. years. I never, I was never as, as fit in my life as what I was there. We'd be running up and down hills all, all day long. Mm. Um, and it had its, I mean, we'd, we'd go to the likes of Liverpool and Arsenal and Man United and stuff like that at the time. and turn them over and you know and a lot we, we won a lot of games in the last five minutes where people's yeah. tongues were hanging out we were still going like um, but the problem was Howard he kept driving us all the time I mean it was unbelievable like we, we, if he wasn't was, in the was team it, like was it, it was all stick and no carrot at times um, yeah I mean I don't think you could get away with it nowadays because the, 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 the footballers nowadays it's like a different thing it's all yeah. about sports science and stuff like that and sometimes the, the players have got too much information. They, they know too much about it. I, I read you made this point today, I think, relative to Chesterfield's position. You want to simplify things a little bit for the mm. players. Yeah. You've got a, a cup tie on Saturday, a very attractive one, home to a great team going great in League One, Walsall. Lost their manager, though. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Battle of the yeah. Care. Who's the caretaker manager there? I think, uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's an experienced guy called John Ward. John Ward, of course. Yeah. He's been yeah. around a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how do you see that one? I, I see it as the kind of... There's often a release of pressure when a manager goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you always get that. Uh, I've, I've actually spoke to the players this week about, you know, it's a cup game, so it's not a league game. It's a bit of a free hit. I, I, I see it as, mm. you know, where I can go in there, we can let the shackles go off a little bit. Um, the only pressure we've got to do is obviously for the club. It'd be yeah. like the business. Yeah. You know, because they'd be desperate if you can get through mm. to to the third round and 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 then get a big tie, yeah. you know, and get a full house. That's that's what you're looking at. So that's the kind of pressure that that we're under, if mm. if if any. Um, but again, it's it's just a case of I, I just want to simplify things, um, and I think sometimes you can get bogged down in tactics and stuff like that. But I, I generally believe that tactics don't win your games. It's your, your players what they win your mm. games. So that's what I'll be trying to say to our lads. That There's some talented players there, boys there, Aribi and people like that. And what, oh, we've we've got some good. I mean, you yeah. don't realise until you get quite close to them. And, and you know, we us we don't share the training ground. So so the youth side of things is away from the first team. Yeah. So you don't really get close until now. Yeah. So I've had a week like with them where I get close and I can see really see what what goes off sometimes. And we have got some good players. Yeah. And I just think it's if I can just get them a bit more confident, uh, let the shackles go off a little bit and say, right, listen, this is a free hit, this. Mm. We get out there, we go and work hard. You know, you show us, you show us yeah. what you can do. And you've got uh, that release of tension where the crowd clearly, Dean Saunders, for whatever reason, yeah. was not a popular yeah. appointment no. to start no. with. No. And a few results go against, they were going to get onto him. And it was a terrible atmosphere from that point of view last mm. week. Mm. Uh, Saunders out, very unpleasant, unpleasant to witness it happening to somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, so the decision was made. Just before we go back to Mark, I know that uh, you're involved in an issue uh, within the greyhound industry at the moment, John, mm -hmm. which is the, the, the welfare of <coughs> retired greyhounds. There's mm -hmm. been a bit of controversy over that, hasn't there, about some greyhounds simply being put down by owners. And yeah. uh, you're active in this area, trying to... Yeah, very active. I, I think them. the, the yeah. greyhound industry gets a lot of unfair criticism um, because you have these, I can only call them do-gooders who really don't know anything about the industry, who are always saying that there's a, a huge number of greyhounds that are, are put to sleep, uh, either because they're not good enough to make it to the track or because when they finish their, their racing career, nobody wants them. And it, it's just not, you know, it's not factual at all. It's just sensationalism. Um, I'm actually chairman of the Retired Greyhound Trust in, she in Sheffield, as well as being managing director of the stadium. And uh, we are very, very active. We find homes, good homes, for, for as many of the dogs as possible. Um, the Sheffield branch itself homes 120 dogs a year. The trainers take a lot. Owners very often will take them home. As a national charity, the Retired Greyhound Trust, we home over 4,000 dogs each year. Um, you know, and welfare is absolutely 
it's paramount to us, you know, mm. either through its race, through the dog's racing career and afterwards. I'm sure dog lovers would be happy and relieved to hear that because mm. I, I, I don't keep dogs myself, but I, I know somebody who's got a couple of greyhounds and they're wonderful pets, aren't they? Fabulous. They're yeah. very affectionate uh, yeah. animals. Lazy. Uh, lazy. They are. They but, only want a couple of 15 minute walks a day. And, and that's, that's it. That's it. They'd like yeah. to be up low here on the city. Low yeah. maintenance. Low maintenance, yeah. But, but even if one or two are being put to sleep by, mm. by owners who simply discard them mm. because they've outlived their usefulness financially, mm. Mm. that's too many, isn't it? It is too many, and we're doing everything that we can. The Greyhound Board of Great Britain, uh, and again, I'm a director of that, we're doing everything we can to get um, regulations introduced so that every dog is found a home. But the problem is, uh, it doesn't matter whether you've got a Greyhound or whether you've got a Spaniel, as an owner, by law, you can have the dog put to sleep yeah. if you so wish. And that's what you're up against in the greyhound industry, horse racing. The difference with horse racing is that obviously people don't expect you to take a horse home because you can't keep that in your front room. Whereas a dog, of course, we're a nation of dog lovers. Mm. I'm a dog lover. Yeah. And you do take your you dog home. You keep dogs yourself? I do, yeah. Yeah, have you got a greyhound? She's a cross greyhound. Yeah? Cross greyhound and collie. Can people contact you watching this show who, who, who would like to house a, give a home to a retired Definitely. racing greyhound? Definitely, yeah. yeah. They can contact me at the stadium. Uh, we'll go and see them. We'll do a home check. And um, we'll tell them all about the greyhounds and what, you know, what sort of pets they make. Excellent. They are beautiful. Okay, they, they are indeed, yeah. Mm. I agree, yeah. completely agree. Love They're the fantastic. They're even better when they win for you, of course. Of and, course, uh, yeah. Are you a gambling man in any way, shape or form? Um, no, never been interested. Um, obviously, football and racing and... Of course, you can't be, of course. You can't still, be gambling You can't be betting on the games, but obviously you, you'll see a lot of people who are interested mm. in, yeah. uh, in, in, in horse racing. That and, cannot and be enforced, though, can it, really? Because everybody's got friends who can put bets on for them. How does a football industry actually enforce that, I often wonder? I don't know. As I say, it's one of them things, Alan, that I don't, don't take any interest in. So, mm. so really, I, I don't really look and listen when, when people are getting, and you'll get players who, who, who are being found guilty and stuff like that. I don't know how they police it, I don't know how they watch it, I don't know how they govern it. Um, but again, it's something that I, I've never been interested in. Mm. Um, not even, not even... Have you checked the odds thing. for the Chesterfield job? Because I'm sure you're on there. I right. think when I, when I looked at it, I think you were 12 to what, 12 to one or 20 to one or something like that? Behind, uh, oh. <laughs> well, the, when I last looked at it, which was a day and a half ago, I think the evens favourite at this stage, and this is pure guesswork because there's no, nothing's been decided already, was Mark Cooper. He was oh, evens, right, one yeah. to yeah, one, yeah. like evens yeah. favourite. But it then moves around. I think Danny Wilson, to start with, was mm. the leader of the field. Uh, Chris Wilder's in there, who is a shout that, you know, mm. I, I, mm. I think that's a serious shout. Mm. He's in there at something like six to one at the moment. I think they've got to be very clever there because they change these betting patterns. They change when certain amounts of money go on things. So they think, oh, people better yeah. on that. We'll lower those. So it's, it's, it's for a business, isn't if, it? That's if, why, you know, they're very clever with it. Yeah. If you and I walk out of here and both of us put 100 quid on this guy for the yeah. Chesterfield job, he's going to be, his odds, are gonna, his odds are going to be changing. Yeah, yeah. Of course they were. Especially as they know he's been in here and they'll assume <laughs> that he said something off the air to us yeah. to, you know, yeah. so marked our cards. Yeah. But I can assure you, in fact, we had a chat before we came on air and Mark has said on air the same. So there's nothing more to discover. We could stick five or six pints down his throat now <laughs> and we'd still be nothing on the wiser. Well, you better go and ask me, me missus because she's already told me what to say anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she offered me the job, she's already told me. We'll, we'll have Mrs Smith on next time, won't bother with you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, God. Well, thanks to everybody. Uh, big Sheffield Wednesday guest ne next week. Not that Mark uh, hasn't been a Big Sheffield Wednesday guest. Ticks a lot of boxes for us. James Greg, thanks very much indeed. Uh, John Gilburn, pleasure as ever. It's a pleasure. Uh, you two are second timers, so again, yeah. we must be doing some something right. Uh, Andy Giddings will also be joining us on next week's programme. This one is going to be repeated as usual at 11pm. Well worth a catch up if you missed and probably better than question time. See you next week. Bye. It's Patrick, Danny Willett, both in action at the Nedbank Golf Challenge. Uh, Matt Fitz started with a minus three round of 69, uh, whilst Danny Willett, he's one back from Henrik Stenson on five under par. 
Mm. Brilliant stuff. stuff. Thanks very much, no James. Worries at all. You know, every time yeah. I think about uh, <clears throat> make a mental, I must invite Nick Matthew back to the studio. You come in here and tell me he's in Hong Kong yeah. or somewhere like that. So we'll put him <laughs> on the, the back burner for a while. Uh, James, thanks very much indeed. Um, OK, John Gilburn, uh, boss of, uh, for want of a better word, boss of Sheffield's Earlton Stadium. Yeah. And Mark Smith, boss, uh, current boss anyway, of uh, Chesterfield Football Club. You were asked it today. I'm going to have to pitch the same question at you. Do you want this job full time? And I'll answer it in the same, uh, same way, <laughs> Alan. Um, <laughs> all I'm concentrating on is, is obviously doing what I need to do, trying to get some results. Um, the the, the res results I'm trying to get are not, you know, obviously it's important that we win games. But me as a professional, I like to win games. So I'm actually not thinking, well, if I win two or three games, that gives me a better chance of the job. All I'm concentrating is, is can we get some wins? Because, A, I would like to get some wins. I'd, I'd like to be part of yeah. a football team that's actually winning games. Um, as I've said before, I, I think whatever will be, will be. I mean, if we get to a situation where we win a few games, then obviously a speculation mm. could be that they might offer me the job. As far as I'm aware, they're open-minded about it, which includes... The possibility of you turning things Absolutely, against yeah. a really good informed team. So Absolutely. a major test. But I see it as being a really good game, actually. Yeah, yeah I think so, it will be a good game. You know, two you know, informed squads really in the league, aren't they? And they've yeah. been on a good run both sides. Derby obviously have been knocking on the door for the last two or three seasons now. Yeah. So it's a pivotal game, I think, in the Sheffield Wednesday. We'll be, season. Able, we'll be able to look back on it, maybe in some depth next week. I can assure you, uh, just heard the news today, there is a we have a major Sheffield Wednesday guest on the programme next week. Very okay. good. We look forward you know, to that one. You know who it is, do you? I, I do know who that is, but we'll uh, keep that one right. quiet. Sheffield United, a tough one to take, as already said at Oakwell last week, in the dying embers of the game. They're in the FA Cup this weekend against Oldham Athletic. Hopefully, right a few wrongs as well. Um, I know that the mood is improving in the Blades camp. It was great to see John Brayford back on Saturday after yeah. visiting this studio on Thursday. Great yeah. performance. It must have been the tea that I made him before the yeah. show. Last I think week. it was the tea he drank after the show that did it. <coughs> yeah, definitely. We all went for a cup of tea after we the did. show. We That's did go for a cup of tea indeed, yeah, yeah of course we did. <laughs> Move on to local football now. Hallam FC, goal in the last minute of their League Cup tie in extra time. Saw them, um, that's obviously unfortunately knocked out of the League Cup, uh, but they take on lowly Wurzburgh at Sandygate on Saturday while Sheffield FC hosts Daventry in the league. I followed that on Twitter, that Hallam game last night. Apparently it was an incredible game, bizarre yeah. game it was described as. Well, there must have been any number of near misses. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Hallam took the lead and then um, Selby equalised and then it went to extra time and it was in the 119th minute that they got the winner. Oh, so yeah. must have been very t difficult for them to uh, take, but they can bounce game. back. It was a great game, apparently. A really great game. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, well, that, you know, they're just outside the playoffs now in that league. First time this season. Um, they've got, uh, as I already mentioned, Wurzburgh. Good chance to get some points on the board and back to winning ways for them, for Ryan Hindley's men. Uh, Steelers, they take on Coventry on Saturday and then they welcome Fife to the arena on Sunday at 5pm face-off. Uh, the Steelers are third in the table as well with a game in hand on the top of the table, Nottingham Panthers. So um, it's mm. very, very tight in that league as well. There's been a revival. It was a most extraordinary interview with Paul Thompson. I don't know if you, you heard yes, it. Yes, I'm aware Following of it, yeah. a, an away defeat just uh, about two or three weeks ago, it certainly put football rants in the shade. A bunch of homers, he said we are, a bunch of homers. And that was one of the mildest things he said. He's had a response. <laughs> yes, I yeah. can imagine. Yeah, yeah well, that, that's, um, yeah, definitely. YouTube, <clears throat> some old Neil Warnock stuff, and it doesn't compare to that, I tell you that. <laughs> um, we've got um, Rugby Union now. Of course, we've got two teams in the local area in National 3 North. Very good standard of rugby. And the Tigers, they're top of that league by 10 points. They travel to Hull this weekend, see if they can extend that lead. Hull, our fellow promotion chases while Sheffield Rugby Club they host Rossendale and they look to make it five wins on the spin for them so very good stuff for the rugby union sides in the local area at the moment as well finished with individuals Nick Matthew he waltzed into the second round of the Hong Kong Open late last night and Matthew finished And all, welcome back to you. Uh, still with John Gilburn, Managing Director of Sheffield's Ollerton Stadium, with Mark Smith, the former Sheffield Wednesday and Barnsley player, who's now interim manager of Chesterfield Football Club. They used to say caretaker manager. It's a bit posher now. They call them 
interim managers. Has it managers. changed now? Oh, Yes, right. it's okay, interim right. managers. He's still, it's still only for, for as long, yeah, just, or a short, yes, or whatever, exactly. if you want the job. James Gregg uh, joins us for his roundup. Before yeah, that, absolutely. I don't know if you were watching from outside the first half. Yeah. We left him mid-story here. He's playing for Sheffield Wednesday at Manchester City at Main Road mm -hmm. in those days in a League Cup tie. Brian Hornsby's taken a penalty for Wednesday near the end, and he's missed, correct? Yeah. And then... Then the referee ordered a retake because the keeper moved for a reason. He was Joe Corrigan. Big Joe Corrigan. Yeah. Big Joe Corrigan. And then the next minute, the ball ends up in my hands. I don't know how. As I said before, I do not know why it ended up in my hands. And I put it down, actually scored. Grief. So This was as a kid of 18 or 19. Yeah, yeah, First yeah. penalty you ever took, yeah? Yeah, that was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that from and again, I, I can't... Un I can't I can't understand, I can't believe, and I, I, can't, I can't remember why. I was the next in line, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, you just put that one away. And then from that one, yeah, I, took, I sent it wrong way, as you do. Five anyway. minutes to go, by the way. <laughs> Five minutes to go, put some one up. What's the result? Yeah, we lost 2-1. <laughs> Oh, no. I think I might have to put one in your own net, who knows. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some late goals in local football, which we'll be talking about anyway in a minute. You've got, you've got, while James is talking, James Craig with his roundup, you've got a few minutes <clears> to <throat> wriggle around questions I'm going to ask you about Chesterfield and your future there. OK? Right. F be warned. <laughs> OK, right. James. What else is going on? Not just football, as we all No, say. it's not. We'll start with football. Um, we've already touched on that. There's been some late goals this week, none less that they killed the Blades last weekend at Oakwell. But we'll start with Sheffield Wednesday. They got dumped out of the League Cup on Tuesday night to Stoke City. Uh, but there's a bigger game, though, many um, Owls fans' eyes at Hillsborough this weekend. It's a televised game against High Flyers Derby. Um, so, of course, the Owls just one point outside the playoffs. That could be a really, really big game. Yeah. Um, in terms of how the season finishes. Um, and you look back at these sorts of games, don't you, at the end of the season, you think, oh, wow, yeah. well, if we could have only got a point against them or whatever. And this is exactly one of those games as well. Derby sitting pretty in third, Wednesday obviously in eighth, as I've already said, have one point to, off the playoffs. I have to hope for, you know, Wednesday are not in the best shape physically at the moment with the injuries, Leuven's Lees in particular, uh, Bannon, will he come back? That, those kind of questions could have a big bearing on, on what happens on Sunday. Absolutely.